Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today I'm going to be tackling a little bit of FinOps, that's financial operations. Now FinOps is a fancy term for basically anything related to managing the cost of your cloud platforms. This could span anything from tagging, monitoring, budgeting, or policies, as well as any reporting that might need to be done to track and manage and make better financial decisions on the cloud. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to automate one of those FinOps features, this one known as Azure Budgets. Now, if it sounds pretty simple, it is. And just like all the things on Azure, thanks to Terraform and the Azure RM provider, I can manage my budgets at scale using code. This will allow me to control what the budget is, what the scope of that budget is, who should be notified and when they should be notified when we start to approach or even exceed that budget. Now this could of course all be set up manually through the Azure portal, but this isn't the Azure portal jockey channel, this is the Azure Terraformer. So without further ado, let's drop into code. And first let's check out this resource within the Azure RM Terraform provider to see what it can do and plan our attack. So I'm gonna pull up my trusty provider documentation. I'm just gonna look for budget. And I can see here I have resources and data sources. I've got a consumption budget resource at the management group, resource group, and subscription level. Because I only have two subscriptions and I haven't really set up my management groups yet, probably tackle that in a future episode, I think I'm just gonna start off with some basic subscription budgets. Again, this is a recurring theme that I try and reinforce on this channel. You don't have to boil the ocean to start using infrastructure as code, to start using policy as code. You can start small and you can expand from there. You can reap the benefits of infrastructure or policy as code without having to analyze all the things. And this is one of the superpowers that Terraform as a tool to complement your process because it allows you to iterate, start small, and expand from there. So let's go check out this consumption budget subscription. And it looks like we are deploying it into a resource group. Actually, it doesn't even look like we're deploying into a resource group. This example has a resource group and a monitor action group. Not exactly sure why. Let's see if they get referenced later on down in this code here. We're just, we're actually just using the subscription ID from the data source. So we can create multiple instances of this resource using a collection of subscription IDs using subscription data source lookups. So if you have a whole bunch of subscriptions, you could probably stamp out um, or modularize like your standard budget configuration, who needs to get talked to, et cetera, and then iterate across that for all of your subscriptions. Of course, if you're getting into that territory, you may wanna consider management groups as well, um, and then just use the management group consumption budget. So here, these are pretty, this is pretty self-explanatory amount. That's how much money I want to spend or don't want to spend any more than that. Time grain, which is monthly. Time period seems like it's like when this budget is applicable. Yeah, so you can set um, kind of an effective date range. Um, if not set, this will be 10 years from the start date. So it kind of defaults an end date there for you. And it does look like that a time period block. Now, if you're going to use a time period block, the start date is required, but let's go check and see if the time period block itself is required. It is required. So bare minimum, you need a time period and you need a start date. Don't necessarily need an end date. Now notification looks like this block is also required. And it looks like the notification block kind of combines the trigger for when somebody should be notified, like when when you're about to exceed your budget. So that could be equal to, like ex I, I, as soon as I cross the line of a, whatever that amount is, $1,000, greater than or greater than or equal to. Oh, and then there's even a threshold type. So if you're forecasted or actual, so this is like, okay, as soon as I'm forecasted to exceed this threshold, then send me a notification because that'll allow me to kind of more preemptively attack this, uh, attack whatever's uh, causing my budget to go up a little crazy. And then here we have different ways of being contacted. We can specify emails, we can specify contact groups, and contact roles. I would assume contact roles is something related to the role assignments that are attached to the subscription. And then contact groups, when you work with Azure Monitor, and that may be why they have that Azure Monitor resource up there, um, when you work with Azure Monitor, there's this action group resource 
that allows you to mix and match lots of different ways of contacting different different identities and different people um, to notify them of things that are happening within Azure Monitor. And then I'm guessing contact emails is kind of like the the bare bones, like, okay, you got an email, maybe maybe this is like, uh, maybe they're not even in your Azure AD or Entra ID, um, and you just want to send them an email, or maybe there's some process that's attached to an email notification, and it, it's going to take an action after that. So looks like we need that. Now, Dimension, Dimension is an Azure Monitor concept. Um, which allows us to delve into different parts of a signal. If we're talking about a budget, like the amount of spend, um, the dimensions of that, it looks like we, it allows us to slice and dice based on resource location, resource type, lots of different things to allow us to really ratchet in fine grain monitoring. Probably won't get into this uh, on this episode um, because I, I just need some basic budgeting on my subscriptions to, to let me know when I'm about to bust through uh, my budget. So anyways, let's uh, let's go get this one coded up. I'm gonna, as usual, I'm gonna, oh man, this example is like really big. So I'm gonna go copy pasta this example and we're gonna, so I'm gonna go copy pasta this example and we're gonna go trim it down once we get it into code. Now the subscription ID, um, I could use a data source, but I, I already have this client config right here. So I can just use the client config current and then I can grab the subscription ID off of that. Now, sometimes uh, Azure resources want the actual subscriptions resource ID versus the subscription ID, which is the GUID. So we may run into trouble here depending on what this returns and what this uh, resource is expecting. So. That's something to pay attention to when you're working with subscriptions. So the amount, um, I think I would go down to something like, let's go 50, time grain monthly, and the start date and end date. I don't want an end date, but I do want a start date. We're just gonna have to use a hard-coded start date and use the first day of the month. So now filter, this is gonna filter this budget around these dimensions. So I can target a specific resource group which there is another consumption budget that's scoped to a resource group, so I'm not quite sure why I would do that. Um, and then there's tags, so if there's a specific tagging scheme that I want to target and filter in on, um, I could do that as well. So again, these are these these filters, both with dimension and tag, allows me to really zoom in and narrow the focus of this of where this budget applies within my Azure subscription. But I, I don't think I need that. So I've got my notification now. We're just gonna we're just gonna put you know an email address on here. We're gonna drop the contact group and the contact roles and we're gonna keep it simple. And I don't know why I would need this. So we should probably, we should probably, see, equal to, I think I'm only gonna get one email. So I should probably set this to like greater than, so we're doing greater than 90. So is this threshold like a percentage? Apparently threshold is always a percent and it has to be between zero and 1,000. 1,000, is that a typo? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not like a mathematician or anything, but Usually percents are between zero and 100. <laughs> so uh, that might be a typo. Um, the example uses 90. Um, I guess technically if we were doing a percentage between zero and 1000, um, 900 would be the 90% mark. And that I guess if we're using integers, I mean, there, there may be a reason why we would want to do a percentage between uh, zero and 1000 because we're working with integers and we can't do decimal places, right? So um, if you if you want to go to the you know, second decimal place, you kind of have to scope your percentage between a much larger number. Um, so that there may be a good reason why why it's between zero and a thousand, but um, and I think I want to say forecasted. So threshold type forecasted. Yeah. So I, I want to because I don't. I don't check these emails very often, so I, I want to make sure that 
it gives me advance notice of when I'm gonna when I'm gonna exceed that threshold. So I can go turn some stuff off. And yeah, I think fifty dollars is uh, <laughs> a very reasonable budget for for my Azure Terraformer uh, subscription. As you saw, I've been blowing through this budget pretty consistently, uh, which I definitely need to ratchet in. Because uh, contrary to popular belief, I am not made of money. I do not have a money tree in my backyard, so um, I cannot afford, uh, you know, five hundred dollar Azure Terraformer bills. <laughs> let's uh, let's make sure that that stops. Uh, okay, so let's let's uh, let's try this out. This looks pretty good. Um, let me just go commit this. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about earlier. It looks like it uh, actually wants the resource ID of the subscription. So the way that you get the resource ID of the subscription is you have to you have to reference it using a subscription data source, which is what they did in the example, which is kind of what made me a little bit suspicious. So if I grab this, so again, the client config is a data source that gets you access to the authentication context of the Azure RM provider. On the client config, there is a subscription ID. There is a client ID, there is a tenant ID. But the subscription ID within the context of a client config is just the GUID. But if you need to actually have the subscription resource ID, which is a fully qualified address, you can see that in the portal where it's got subscription slash your GUID. Um, then you need to use this other data source called Azure RM subscription. This does take parameters, but if you leave it blank, it's just going to grab whatever the current subscription is. In a sense, it's kind of like a shorthand notation for the client config just to access the current subscription context. So let's replace that. We are still using current, so this should be okay. Uh, actually, the problem is this is, uh, this is also a tricky thing. You, this uh, data source has a subscription ID and an ID. So not only does my Azure RM subscription have a subscription ID, which is what I was referencing, which is just the GUID, then I also I need to make sure I reference the ID, which is the actual resource ID. So if I just drop this to ID, we should be good to go. So again, you got to pay attention to what you need to reference, whether it's a subscription ID or the subscription's resource ID. Okay, this uh, plan looks good. Let's go give it a try. If we go look at the portal, we can go see what budgets that I have applied. And we can see that I don't have any budgets. Now let's wait for the supply to finish and let's go check that again. And it looks like we created our first budget. Let's go check this out in the portal. We should see a new budget out here. And it's the, the name is a little bit nasty. So th apparently the name is more of like a more of a display name, but you can see I've got creation date, December 1st, expiration date defaults to 10 years in the future, and I set my budget of $50 with a forecast. So yeah, there we go, resets monthly, and 90% of that, I'm gonna get a notification at 90% of that um, of $45, and it's just gonna send it to an email address um, that, I, that I plugged in there. So, so yeah, that's how you do it. Um, you can use this resource to create all sorts of budgets using different thresholds and amounts for different workloads that you have within your organization. Um, I would recommend thinking about how you define the blast radius for, for your budgets as code. You might want to have enterprise scoped organization. You might have folks within your organization that are going to have very high level budgets that target management groups or subscription levels, but then you might have application teams or smaller, more focused platform teams that are going to apply budgets around very specific resource groups or service types, etc. You might have a Git repo for that enterprise platform team that targets management groups, and then each app dev team that's managing its own project might have its own budget scoped with it within its deployments. But most likely, you're probably going to want to have budgets in their own repo 
not bundled within your own application code because they're probably gonna be in their own Terraform workspace, maintained within their own Terraform state file, and you'll probably wanna make changes to them separately from your application infrastructure because your budgets are probably gonna span multiple environments, dev, test, prod, etc. And the change cadence is gonna be coordinated with your FinOps team or your Cloud Center of Excellence or whatever part of the organization is responsible or has this charter or responsibility. Well, I hope that helps. It's a very simple resource that can be applied at three different scopes within the Azure topology, management group, subscription, and resource group. And even at each level, we saw that using dimensions and tagging, we can really ratchet down the granularity and get in the weed with whatever workload that we're working on. So I'm gonna continue monitoring my subscriptions to make sure I don't burn a hole in my pocket. You should too. Try it out, let me know what you think. And if you have any suggestions on how better to use this budget resource, put them in the comments below. Love to hear about it. Anyways, that's it for me. This is the Azure Terraformer, signing off.